Before you start recording, can I just say one thing? I'm recording, so go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, I I'm going to start recording. <laughs> I love Nancy so much, and she is an English teacher after all. So it's funny to me that she misspelled rainbow like four times. <laughs> I love you, Nance. Okay. Anyway, let me go ahead and uh, start sharing this. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Higher frequencies, the sound of healing. The first sound was when God said, light exists. Now, at that point in time, in the void of nothingness, you actually hear a frequency and a vibration, and it begins to change things in the, the unknown nothingness of the universe. But as soon as the vibration begins to kick in, things begin, begin to happen. And that is the power of resonation, the echoes of his glory. I actually want to stop really fast. So it was a love it. One, one rabbi said, he said, when God began to speak, even when he began to uh, 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 introduce himself to the 70 elders of Israel on Mount Sinai, and then began to you know, establish the covenant and the agreement between God and, and mankind, um, that when he began to speak, there was nothing to where there was an echo or something that came back on to God. Like God has never heard his own voice because when he speaks, there's no echo. Come on, somebody. When he speaks, there's no echo. That's what the Bible says. Um, there, uh, his word shall not come back void because as it goes out, it accomplishes what it's going to do. So when he begins to speak, let light be as he speaks it out, it goes out. There's no echo. So it just completes it, completes the, the, um, the command, if you will, of what he speaks out. And so as he speaks it out, there is no echo that comes back to God. God has never heard his own voice heard back at him. That's why his, his word shall not return void. It shall accomplish that, which it says, and that is the power of resonation or the echoes of his glory. It just continues to speak. So we're talking about higher, higher frequencies. You have to understand thinking first between Hebraic or Jewish mentality and the Greek mentality. We've been taught with the Greek mentality, which is why we have a misunderstanding of the scriptures. So the Jews think inductive. They gather information and come to a conclusion dimensionally and function, right? The Greeks think deductive. Jews think inductive, Greeks think deductive. They use logic and reason to come up to a conclusion. They think linear and with form. So the difference between the Jewish mentality or the Hebraic mindset and the Greek mindset is function and form. So in other words, if you look at function and form, if I look at, for example, a car, a car, the functionality um, of a car is just basically to, you know, drive around, or, or we'll see that the functionality is basically to drive, to movement. But the, I'm sorry, the form is just to, to drive, right? But the functionality, pick people up, take people off, go somewhere, run, escape, run to, protect. So it, it creates this more dynamic view other than saying some, something to get me from A to B. No, no, it can get you there safely. It could be a house. It could be a refuge. It could be an escape place. It could be a place of solitude. So you see what I'm saying? It's got so many different, so much functionality with it. And so when you read the scriptures, you got to think about what is the functionality of the Torah? Not instead of just going, you know, thou shalt not kill. Why not? Because life is important. You see what I'm saying? So they, the Jews take it a step further and think more dimensionally and more depth with more depth other than just saying, you know, a car just drives you. No, no, it does a whole lot more. It becomes a, a workhorse. It becomes a, um, a, a place to sleep, a place to rest, a place to eat. You see what I'm saying? It creates a whole lot more involvement or functionality than just taking somebody to work and back. For example, the eyeball. Jews see a recording device, an instrument to bring revelation, an instrument to bring, I'm sorry, to create an weapon and a weapon to see the enemy from afar off. That's what you would see when you say, we're talking about an eyeball to a Jew. To the Greeks, it's just an eyeball. The thing in your face, you got two of them, deal with it. 
You see what I'm saying? It goes a whole lot more in depth on the functionality other than just the form. And so when we talk about frequencies, there's different types. There's a resonate, isolation, reverberate, frequency. I'm, I'm sorry, of, I'm sorry, of sound, rather, I'm sorry. So when you hear about sound, the prolonging of sound by reflection is reverberation. So that means what to um, uh, have like when you drop a, 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 a stone in a puddle, it begins to woo, 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 increase, increase, increase. That's resonate. Oscillation is the movement back and forth at a regular speed. So the faster the speed goes, the higher the oscillation. Reverberate is the echo. To resound, to cast back or reflect. The original Latin means to strike back. So if you go to like the Grand Canyon and go, hello, you're going to hear, hello, you're going to hear it again. Hello, 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 hello. And what happens is, if you go, hello, 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 hello. Now, 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 batting, 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 four, four, LA, LA, Dodgers, Dodgers, Dodgers. Andre, Andre, hard, 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 hard. You'll say that my voice will begin, the reverberation begins to diminish uh, every time, every time you hear it back, because the sound, the, the reverberation is getting weaker. So it has to resound. So if I go, hello, it hits something and bounce back, I'm going to hear it right back at me. That's what I'm saying. When God speaks, there is no reverberation. It does not come back on him. And there's no resound that God hears back himself. It doesn't cast back on him. When he speaks, it goes out to them. So we're talking about frequency. We're talking about the rate at which something occurs or is repeated over a particular period of time over a given sample. For example, I have to go to the bathroom at night. Twice as much as I do in the daytime. Therefore, the frequency of my bathroom visits is higher at night than the daytime. So the frequency is the amount or the rate at which something occurs. If I go to the bathroom, and I'm not trying to be weird. Enough, if I go to the bathroom like twice in the daytime, okay. If I go to the bathroom four times a night, then my frequency has increased. So we're talking about frequency. That is the rate at which something occurs. So everything in the universe has a natural frequency. Everything vibrates. Resonance occurs when a material or object is vibrated at its natural frequency. In other words, you're going to hear that echo or that, well, that's where we, we, we get the term vibration because it's going woo, 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 back again, 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 again. So materials or object is vibrated at its natural frequency. The result of resonance is always a big vibration. That is a loud sound. So the louder the sound, the louder the resonance, the louder the, or the deeper or the richer the vibration. For example, a bass drum. That buzzing, rattling sensation is resonance. Reverb is a dying out of sound. That woo 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 woo. It is artificial resonation. So I can take my keyboard and I can go on my keyboard and go boom woo woo woo. And all I'm doing is making a fake noise of a bass drum. And that's reverb, the dying out of sound. It's artificial resonation, okay? Whereas resonance is the reinforcement of sound vibrating off a neighboring object. In other words, the echoing at Grand Canyon back and forth again. And what happens is this. If I go, hello, 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 it's just going to keep going back and forth. At the frequency I keep hearing it, it determines how fast the oscillation is. So you see how it all works together? So if I go, hello, 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 and just, just so we're clear. When the two angels of the Ark of the Covenant, they've got like their their wings like this, right? Both their wings, are, and they're saying, glory, 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 glory. They are vibrating at such a frequency, a high frequency, it is going woo, woo, woo. And it begins to expand out into the universe. So God's glory, ha, I tell you, the glory of God is being magnified by the angels covering the, the, the cherubs, which are covering over the Ark of the Covenant, uh, and basically the throne room, 
are vibrating. How long, how long, how long, how long? Glory, 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 glory to God the most high God. And so they keep reverberating back and forth again. And the frequency of what you're doing is, it's un, it just doesn't stop. There's no time. It just goes on and on and on. So God's glory begins to magnify and increase over the course or the duration. If we were looking at time from point A to point B, it just keeps on going on into infinity. Because God is eternal. Come on, somebody. It just increases and increases and increases. Why am I sharing this? Here, I'll tell you why in a second. The average frequency of the human body is 60 hertz. Okay? That means you are, right now, as you sit there and watch this video, you're recording WebEx, you are vibrating right now at 60 hertz. Did you know that? Actually, it's between 60 and 100. We're going to get in a second. Between 60 and 100, whatever, uh, hurts. That's that, That's just you sitting there. That's what you vibrate at. So every disease has a frequency. Did you know that? Every disease has a frequency. When the frequency our body drops, our frequency of our body drops to 58 and below, cold and flu symptoms appear. So in other words, if your frequency is above 60, you are not going to get a cold or flu. Did you hear me? If your frequency is above 60 hertz, you are not going to catch a cold or the flu. At 52 hertz, your body drops to 52 hertz, hertz, diseases start to happen and at 42 hertz cancer appears so what i'm saying is this if your frequency of your body drops below 42 hertz cancer appears at 25 hertz we die so your body must maintain a vibrating frequency of at least 60 hertz for you to stay healthy. Stress lowers our frequency by eight points. So if we go back to this, this where here, Just dropping it two frequency, two hertz, you're gonna catch a cold and flu. If there's stress in your body and your body drops from 60 down to 52, all of a sudden now your body's now open up to have diseases enter your body because of stress. Are you with me? Because of stress. So also the food we eat can lower our frequency as well, which is one reason why if you have a body full of, if your body is full of alkal, um, uh, 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 if you have a, an acidic body, there's an alkaline body and an acidic body. If your body is alkaline, which basically means there's no acid, not that much acid in your body or acidic, uh, 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 some fluid running through your, your body, then your frequency will be maintained. If you drop below that, basically saying, if your body becomes more acidic, you're going to lower your frequency, and hence the reason why um, cancer cells and diseases. And just so we're clear, cancer cannot live in a body that is alkaline. I'm going to say it again. Cancer cannot live in a body that is alkaline. A, a cancer lives when a body is acidic. So all the salty, acidic, not good for your food, you are going. It, you're, you're, you open yourself up to the opportunity or the availability of becoming disease and cancer ridden. Now, interesting enough, thank you, Jesus, natural elements help. For example, frankincense has a frequency of 200 hertz. This can literally raise our frequency where our symptoms in our bodies will leave. In other words, if you apply frankincense to your body, 
you're going to vibrate at such a frequency that diseases will start to leave your body. Myrrh has a frequency of 105 hertz. Now, interesting enough, gold has a frequency of 37 hertz, that, but that's in small, very small quantities. Metals resonate what you're actually vibrating. So we talked about resonation basically meaning the echo part. So metals echo what you are already vibrating. So if you're in a good mood and you're wearing gold, the gold will begin to magnify. You become not just you've been in a good mood because it's magnified. You become in a happier mood. If you're discouraged or sad or stressed out, if you're wearing gold, you become depressed. It begins to magnify what you are already feeling. So interesting enough, in the gold, gold, uh, frankincense, and myrrh, the three things given to Jesus, the Holy Child, was for keeping him healthy, sound, and strong. Are you with me? When the three, when the wise men gave him frankincense and myrrh and gold, it was to keep Jesus healthy, strong, and sound. Rose oil has a frequency of 320 hertz. Yes, from roses. The oil from a rose has 320 hertz. Lavender has a frequency of 118 hertz. This is why you feel better when people bring you flowers. And this is why God has a garden. Because when he walks to his garden, it makes him happy. His vibration is flowing through that garden. So if you ever notice that if you do get like women, like not just women, but you know, people who give flowers, um, you know, when you're sick in hospital or at a, at a happy occasion, graduation, or even the Thanksgiving, or not Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, it makes you feel differently, doesn't it? You know why? Because you are now vibrating because of the element that is in a room. It picks up your vibration. It picks up your own human body's vibration. This is why you feel better when you receive flowers. Interesting enough, peppermint has a frequency of 70 hertz, which the, I'm going to stop it real fast. Which then explains why during Christmas season, you feel all lovey-dovey and, 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 and all, uh, what's the term, festive for the season? Because there's peppermint all over the atmosphere. And I promise you, Starbucks uh, will make more money because they got that crazy peppermint little mocha pacino thingy. Peppercino, I forget what you call it. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of pepper, uh, peppermint. So, but I know that they do some peppermint drink over there. And I'm not, not if you work at Starbucks and Starbucks is free watching, praise the Lord, God bless you, do your thing. But it does raise your frequency. It does. Have you noticed when you eat peppermint, it clears your nostrils? <laughs> it's all science. So every cell in your body comes into agreement with what you say. Amen, Bradley. Every cell in your body comes into agreement with what you say. You know why? The very frequency that comes out of your body begins to dictate how you are going to act, how you're going to feel, and how you're going to be. Because your body, every cell in your body will come into agreement with what you say. So please stop cursing yourself. Stop self-sabotaging yourself. Stop, for the love of God, start killing yourself by the words you speak because every cell in your body will come into agreement with what you say. So now there's a part two. I love it when they see, you see at, um, uh, uh, I don't know, I guess fashion shows or award shows, <clears throat> there's always, excuse me, somebody, some reporter looking at some, you know, athlete or star or musician or singer and what are you wearing? And that's the, that's the number one question. And they'll sit there and go, I wear Chanel or Jimmy Choo or Le Vol, Le Vol, Le Vol, Le Vol, Le Vol, from France. That's the latest style. And, blah, blah, blah. and they've got like this giddy look on their face and expression. 
because they are now wearing something that they have on their body. So I want to ask you, what are you wearing? We're talking about higher frequencies. What are you wearing? What do you got on right now? This is fine linen. It's beautiful, bit of material, kind of expensive and pricely. This is fine wool, beautiful material, natural material. Leviticus 19.9, I'm sorry, 19.19 says these words. You shall, you shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with the diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and wool come upon thee. I'm going to say this part again. Neither shall a garment mingled with linen and wool come upon thee. Deuteronomy 22, 9-12 says these words. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and a donkey together. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts as of woolen and linen together. Thou shalt not make the fringes upon thy four. I'm sorry. Thou shalt make the fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture, wherewith thou cover thyself. Basically, if you're wearing a linen like a gown, or or uh, you know they they call them um, the kaftans in Africa, but you know the the, the typical uh, Hebrew wear, um, you gotta have uh, hinges on all four all four corners. From sorry, fringes on all four all four corners. Now. These are talking, we're talking about God's statutes and laws. So we can understand God's moral laws. Uh, don't kill and steal and destroy. That's a given. We get that. We understand that. Right? And we can understand about not growing different seeds and crops together because if you've got like this apple tree growing next to some squash, you're going to kill your squash. And then the vines from the squash is going to kill the tree. So yeah, it'll be like you'll ruin your whole harvest. So we get that. That's logical, scientific, but it's also logic. You're not supposed to mix different kinds of fruits and, and um uh, 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 plants and vegetables together because they will the soil can't handle both and you destroy you. the entire harvest will be destroyed so we get that and we can understand about not putting an ox with a donkey and talk about being unevenly yoked it's just well, you're not going to get anywhere so all that makes sense all that makes sense right but <laughs> why in the world does God care about mixing linen and wool Right? And why is that written in the Torah? You will not mingle these two materials together. What in the world? Why does you care? In fact, there's actual law. The law is referred to as a, as called shanays. Shatnays. That's there's actually that's the word for it. Mingling linen and wool together is called shatnays. And shatnays is the forbidden cloth made by blending linen and wool together. Again, why does God care about mixing linen and wool? And why is it a commandment not to do that? What do you think? You can talk back to me. Um, linen is for summer and wool is for winter. Is there a problem with those two just don't, they're not going to work together. You're going to get one really weird garment. <laughs> Anything else? Take a guess. It, huh? I'm guessing each have a certain amount of Hertz frequency, you know, <laughs> that they vibrate in. <laughs> are, are they, are they dampeners? No. I, I right. have a, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Bingo. Wait. They have different frequencies. Okay. I was going to add something. Mystic Revelation. Hold on, babe. I want you to add, keep that. Keep that in mind. Scientific details of the linen frequency study. In 2003, a study was done by a Jewish doctor. Her name was Heidi Yellen on the frequencies of fabric. According to the study, the human body has a signature frequency of 100, and our, or, or, I'm sorry, uh, well, we, we, we talked about between 60 hertz and 100, and organic cotton is the same, about 100. 
The study shows that if the number is lower than 100, it puts a strain on the body. A diseased, nearly dead person has a frequency of about 15 hertz, and that is where polyester, rayon, and silk register. Non-organic cotton registers at a signature frequency of about 70. However, if the fabric has a higher frequency, it gives energy to the body. This is where linen comes in as a super fabric. Its frequency is 5,000. Wool is also 5,000. But when mixed together with linen, the frequencies cancel each other out and falls to zero. Even wearing a wool sweater on top of a linen outfit in a study collapsed the electrical field. The reason for this could be that the energy field of wool flows from left to right while that of linen flows in the opposite direction from right to left. I'm gonna pause there for dramatic effect. Pamela, what were you gonna say? Um, I was gonna say as a crocheter, I have crocheted with wool and I have crocheted with not necessarily linen, but forms of cotton. And when you're working with um, like alpaca and other other yarns, um, animal yarn is different than uh, plant-based yarn. So I thought that that had something to do with it when you were talking about that, so. Yes, and you're right. You're absolutely right. Thank you for sharing that. You're getting, you're getting ahead of my notes. Oh, sorry. Yes. That's okay. <laughs> But isn't it interesting, like you just said, that Hebrew is read from right to left, while English is read from left to right. Like I keep saying, you cannot combine the Hebraic mindset with the Greek mindset because they will cancel each other out. And just like Pamela said, the softness and, re I'm sorry, the softness and smoothness of cotton resolve the roughness and skin friction issues of linen. On the other hand, the lightness of the cotton material is shouldered by the linen's stiffness. So you're gonna have two different things. And by the way, just so we're clear, linen, when you dye linen, it actually sucks up more color than you would cotton, or wool rather. So in other words, if you're gonna dye or like wool, you wanna dye it red, you're gonna have those weird match between a different, you're going to have like splats, splatches of deeper reds on one, on one half and lighter reds on the other because they don't dye the same. So it's not so much as God saying, oh, I don't want you to just, you know, you know, wear two different materials. It's because of the fact that the human body is supposed to be in a realm where your frequency and literally, 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 your body is actually being raised at a higher frequency when you wear all wool or all linen, if you mix them both, it'll drop down to zero. And so therefore you don't get the benefits of the material when you are wearing it. Interesting enough about linen, <clears throat> excuse me. It is a textile made from the fibers of the flax plant. Like Pamela said, from plant-based. Well, linen is actually commonly referred to as, ready for this? the healing fabric or the preferred fabric for a healthy lifestyle. And there are a few, a few reasons why this is. Linen clothing is scientifically proven to assist in all types of healing. In the past, the restorative properties of linen were acknowledged by its preferred use as a material that bandages were made out of. It is interesting that when you have a linen bandage, you get healed faster. Linen naturally flights against different types of bacteria and fungi, and flax is found to be a very effective barrier to some diseases because of its high vibrations. Hospital sheets used to, uh, used to use linen fabric because it was widely known to be the best for healing and protection against infections. Dr. Philip Callahan. Another physician and researcher was able to prove the existence of this energy using plant leaves attached to an, a, a, a oscilloscope, 
vibration that I told you about the frequency vibration. He had discovered that flax cloth, as suggested in the book of Moses, the Torah or the Panuch, Pentateuch, actually acts as an antenna for the energy. Let's read that part again. Flax cloth or linen cloth, as suggested in the book of Moses in the Torah, acts as an antenna for the energy. He found that when the pure flax cloth or linen was put over a wound or local pain, it greatly accelerated the healing process. So you've got this ability to see that your wounds and your cuts and your bruises heal faster, not because of the ointment, but because of the linen cloth that you put over on top of it. Now you begin to understand when the Bible says, when, when Paul says, take my linen cloth and put it over them for healing, because <laughs> it's not so much as the drop of oil that was poured on top of it. It was a linen it was a linen material that vibrates at 5,000 hertz that it causes your body to increase its vibration, to cast out sickness and disease. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. It's starting to make sense now. Now, could you imagine, now understanding this now, we talked about gold, we talked about linen, we talked about wool, right? And the high frequencies that it does, it magnifies and magnifies, right? So we can just imagine the frequency of the high priest, his entire ensemble. This dude is vibrating at a frequency that is probably closest to heaven's frequency than you can ever imagine. Because you're only going to have the golden crown, which is going to vibrate from the top of your head, where wisdom and knowledge is vibrating at, uh, or it emanates from. And then you got the headdress made of the linen, keeping your head safe. And then you got the onyx stones, the gemstones, which are very, very powerful, high vibrating gemstones on the shoulders. And then you got the golden ephod, again, gold, vibrating around your chest and your heart. Come on, somebody. And then you got 12 powerful gemstones vibrating around your heart and around your lungs and around the inner organs of the human body. So imagine the gold on top of your head, the linen vibrating over your mind and over your thought process, the golden onyx on your shoulders, the golden ephod around your chest, and 12 powerful gemstones all vibrating, come on, come on into the blue linen over your body on top of all that, the double portion of the white linen underneath. And that's a, just to make it all complete the ensemble, bells of gold and pomegranates on the tails, on the bottom, from the top of your head, down to the soles of your feet. The high priest is an individual that is vibrating at a frequency un un unheard of and human concept because every part of him from the flax and from the wool and from the uh, gold and from the gemstones, he is now an individual that is now vibrating at such a high rate. Anyone who comes in contact or near him will not only get healed, they will get saved, they will get delivered, they will get set free. That is the power of the, the appearance of what the high priest wears. Ah, yeah, and the men in white linen in Hebrews, exactly. The men in white linen have not only the anointing, but also the ability to come near you and change your whole world. You are a royal priesthood and a holy priesthood. You walk and talk at a vibration of Aaron and the Kohen. So let your faith have a voice and let it resonate within your being by what you wear and what you have on because it matters to God. The God who says in the Torah, I don't want you mixing wool and I don't want you mixing linen because it's going to cancel each other out, bring you down to zero, and you're going to be ineffective. Ineffective in the kingdom. Ineffective because you just canceled everything out that I'm working in you. God doesn't just say things just to willy-nilly say, I don't like the way linen looks at wool. No, I don't want you doing that. No, there's a reason behind that. There's a reason. Now, saying all that now, 
imagine now the lowest vibrations are nylons and spandex how do you feel when the person well ladies more importantly wearing nylons and spandex you can't wait to take those things off because it affects not only your mood but your emotions this is the reason why when people who wear leather they've got like this um how can i put it rough tough arrogant hostile aggressiveness uh, about them because it changes the frequency when you see somebody wearing leather versus somebody wearing wool you see the impression and you think huh that guy is powerful that person is weak or that girl is tough that girl is you know or, you know ineffective and that because of the 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 psyche the mentality when you see people wearing these things but in particular nylon and spandex and rayon and polyester really bring out the worst in you now if you get an opportunity do a test i'm i'm fat we're gonna we're gonna be in the process of doing one we're gonna get some wool sheets we're gonna put them on the bed and then we're gonna get some pound what's the other one um linen no linen. the other uh bamboo oh, the yeah bamboo okay hey, andre there aren't oh uh, there maybe there are wool sheets but you're you're it's cheaper to do wool socks or okay yeah, you don't want you. Yeah. Or nylon socks or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't want you to break the bank. I mean, just try different materials. Try something polyester, man-made polyester, nylon, or wool, or, or um, uh, bamboo, and then try something natural like wool and linen, and see if there isn't a difference. We're gonna try with the sheets. We we have got some bamboo sheets, and we're gonna put some wool sheets on, and just because, we're gonna see if we feel better, because I promise you. Um, I've noticed a difference. I have noticed a difference. We had some, and I'll just tell you, we we what was it, a couple years ago we bought those the brown one, the brown cheese family was that um, Egyptian, oh, the cotton. Egyptian cotton. Yeah, yeah I, I was I I had a fit because I, it was it was kind of costly, and I'm I'm like thinking like why wow, just it's a stupid sheep, just gonna rest my head on it and sweat all night anyway. You know, I don't, I don't want to be paying all. No, who cares? And so, but then we 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 bought them happy wife happy life so we bought i bought the sheets and good lord i felt better in the morning i thought like there's something to that i just thought because and yeah i i for all rights and purposes they did feel soft and nice I thought, okay but i woke up feeling better but this is years before understanding now that the wool sheets because of the vibration yes not only did it make me, it, uh, not only did I think I felt better, it actually- Andre, you keep, you keep interjecting the word wool like it's cotton. It's not. Wool is from a sheep and yeah. cotton is from a plant. So, Egypt, so I'm Egypt, sorry, so the Egyptian e cotton, right? Yeah, Egyptian cotton is cotton. Yeah, and then the linen is a flax. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and wool, there, I don't think there are wool sheets because the, they uh, would be very, very costly. No, well, well, yeah, I imagine so. But my point being is that we've had linen sheets, right? Yeah, we well, we had the microfiber ones that were. Microfiber. Those are so bad. Those are right. basically plastic woven into liquid. Like they melt plastic. They form it into little tiny strands and they blend those strands into th fiber threads and they make sheets out of um basically plastic that's why you sweat more when you use them they don't hold their shape they don't stay on the bed very long they're horrible okay so that's the microfiber microfiber synthetic First, ones yeah those are synthetic. First the Egyptian cotton right yeah you can tell this is not my field of expertise all i know is i did feel better uh physically and mentally i actually did feel better so just because of the fact, just because of the fact that like I go, all right, let me go get some, I got some Martha Stewart sheets, not, it's not, not too expensive. So we're gonna go try, we're gonna do an experiment just to see, maybe it was just me, but I know when I did that, not understanding what I know now, 
I really did feel something. I noticed there was a difference in the way I woke up the next morning. And like I said, it was, it was, what was it? What were the brown ones, honey? These, the brown ones are um, Egyptian cotton. No, but what was it the thread count? Oh, uh, 600. Okay, 600, whatever. So I, we just got some 200 thread counts. So we're got, just because it's just going to see if the thread count even matters. So then we're going to experiment. Oh. So, yeah, you need to tell people you, when you say Martha Stewart that you actually brought organic cotton versus. Oh. See, I'm so new at this stuff. I'm just, look, I bought some sheets, <laughs> organic, and the 200 thread count. I want to use that to see if that's a difference between the other ones we got, which is 600 thread count. Because again, this is all new area. All I know is I, I, me, Andre, I felt better with the the brown sheets which were 600 thread count i don't know if it was organic egyptian or not, cotton egyptian, egyptian cotton. cotton was it organic i take it it's not organic okay it's not organic so that, okay so yeah perfect okay so now we're gonna get we're getting some organic 200 thread count sheets to see if that's different than the other ones and so it doesn't have to be sheets it could be socks or even a shirt just wear different fabrics and see how it affects you emotionally and physically just to see but i'm telling right now god it got, it got himself himself said, do not repeat, do not mix wool and linen. He said that. And the reason why I did that is because you lose the energy that it has. So we're gonna pray. I felt like repenting, like, God, why did I buy that? And and I, I mentioned spandex is because all those who were wearing, and I'm dating myself, uh, late 80s when it became popular. I'm gonna even go back as far as to say when, um, you know, what did I want? Hoo, 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 on Greece. Didn't she, didn't she have on Spandex? Like, didn't, in the movie? Am I right? Was that, or that leather? I don't know, what materials. I, I believe her, okay. Nancy says yes. I thought her <laughs> pants were leather pants. Okay. Well, then, uh, maybe they were Spandex. I don't know. Yeah. But or leather. But point being is that from the eighties, uh, you know, to the nineties, whatever, that was a rage. Everyone had to wear spandex. And then yet you, you found out that there was a lot more hostility, uh, arrogance and pride to people wearing those things. And so it makes sense that if you're wearing a man made product on your body, it's going to affect you emotionally and probably um physically. But definitely. If there's an opportunity now, I don't want, I don't, I don't wish any sickness or disease upon anybody. But if you happen to be in a position where you need either a band aid or something like that, put on a linen cloth. See if the, I just, I can't wait to experiment with this because God set it for a reason. So now we, now you know, we get to activate this and see this in real life. But my point being, what I was going to say was, I feel like repenting because I would just buy stuff because it was cheap. <laughs> so I don't know if this even, I don't know material this shirt. All I know is that I don't even want to like, Put on anything that's not made any longer. So, and again, I'm not telling you to break your bank. I'm just saying, if it's going to affect your mood, it's going to affect your emotions. If it's going to affect you physically, consider upgrading, increasing your frequency, because that's where your healing begins. So, yeah, I, let's just let's just make it right. So, pray with me, Father. We thank you, Lord God. Understand. Understanding, now understanding why you said, do not mix linen and wool together because they cancel each other out. Their frequencies will amount to zero, was to protect us, not to harm us, to keep us safe, not to put us in danger, to increase our frequency, not to diminish our health. Forgive us, Lord God, for quickly buying the cheapest, fastest thing in order to make ends meet, to make it buy. We work with what we had to work with, but Lord, now understanding, Lord God, would you forgive us, Lord God, for trying to just not just because of the fact of the way it looked to look cool or to be cool or to be in that place we thought it enhanced us or made us better. It was never about the clothes. It was always about the frequency. And Father, we want to vibrate with what, 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 what heaven's frequency. We want to be moved at what moves heaven. We want to be able to function what, what, func what functions under heaven. We want to be in that place, oh God, where we begin to not only live and move and have our being, we do so with the full faith and force and power and glory of the radiance and the resonance 
and the frequency, the vibration of heaven, Lord God, that we may increase, Lord God, and everything none of you, Lord, begin to decrease and eventually would go away from our minds, our souls, and our bodies. I thank you, Lord God, that you've created in us to be not only new, but reborn. And in doing so, Father God, we are not going back to the things of the past. We are not going back to the, the, the patterns of the past. And now we are not going back to the material of the past. We're stepping into the new and we are stepping into the now, the very place where heaven meets earth. It is in that place and in that frequency, Lord. We understand now, we understand now why the tabernacle was covered under wool. We understand now, Father, that why the um, uh, the inner uh, the inner court in the holy place, Lord, had linen, Lord, separating the holies of holies from the outer courts and the inner courts, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that we understand now the frequency of the high priest is the frequency that you've called us to walk in. It is in that, Lord God, that we have put on man-made material and have diminished the capacity of the power of heaven. Not anymore. From this day forward, Father, things change. We're going to let our, our faith have a voice. And what we put on and what we wear will be will begin to speak so loudly, people won't be able to hear the words we say, but they will definitely feel the love of God that will emanate from us so that we can become a vessel to allowing others, Lord, to receive and to know that God is real. And he's alive and well. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the newness of revelation, for the ability, Lord God, to understand why you said the things you did and to operate and function under that auspice to know that everything we say and do glorifies the kingdom of heaven. And for that, Father, we are careful to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I know you're probably all going through your wardrobe right now going, I'm going to get rid of that. <laughs> I want you to like get rid of stuff. I mean, just if you just kind of just take notice of what makes you feel better, okay? What makes you feel better? Because God apparently cares about what makes you feel better. So let your faith have a voice. And let it resonate within your being by what you say and what you put on. Any questions or comments? I can't help but now be intrigued you know, thinking about like what frequency does the Holy Spirit vibrate at, you know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Or angels. Yeah. Or even the opposite end of the spectrum, you know, demonic spirits. I feel like there's so much we can learn, you know, from diving into those different things. Absolutely. Absolutely. I should just do a chart and get all the frequencies because everything vibrates. Everything has a vibration. Everything, even plants have vibration. So if we were to kind of, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll put together just a, like leather, silk, you know, rayon, uh, polyester. And we'll just kind of get a list of all the, the different um, uh, frequencies and see, you know, where we stand. And we're at, because again, we're at 60, right? So anything below that is not healthy. So the, that, that's, we should just govern our lives by that. And we'll just see. Uh, apparently the high priest does. And I, to know that they, they call it chardonnays, which is basically the understanding of if you do mix those colors together, because there was there I think there was something well wicks so the high priest, not the high not the high priest, but the priest, the Levi, Levitical priest of the, the, the from the tribe of Levi, they were allowed to wear chardonnays, but they weren't operating under the high priest. That was a whole all the rules changed and become the high priest because then you have to wear the holy garments, which are basically pure linen. And gold and uh, ephod and the um, the gemstones and so I can imagine what that frequency is. Just being around somebody with that frequency, which is probably just amazing, just to stand next to. So yeah, that makes sense now. Well, you know, the, the the individual wearing this must be um, analyzed and examined before he even steps into the holy place, uh, into the tabernacle, because if anything was wrong, and a man can't step in and the whole world is doomed. But thank you, Jesus. There was a man starting from Moses and Aaron who walked in there with God, who walked in there with linen, with the gold and the gemstones, and vibrated, came out, came out glowing with the radiance of heaven. That is the result. Uh Lynn, do you have a question or a comment? 
Yeah, it was more like a comment. Good morning, happy Saturday. Good morning. <laughs> well, afternoon, I should say. <laughs> but um, even when you were asking that in the first place, I was thinking more of linen as being a breathable fra fabric versus wool. And you have to think about the seasons of when you're wearing both. Um, in the summertime, you need with that heat capacity and the uh, the humidity index and everything else, you want to be able, your, your body goes through changes, you know, where we can't really see a lot of times with the naked eye, it might be 80 degrees during the day and it dropped down to 60 in the evening, 55 or something like that, which just changing the body, your body, not only frequency, but definitely has those temperatures that go up and down as well. And when you have it on a breathable fabric, it really makes a difference versus you have it on wool, which is wool is pretty much you see a lot in the winter time mm -hmm. because now your body is in shock, especially if you walking out of your nice warm home into ice cold weather, frigid weather, your body goes into shock. Um, but we continue to go into motion because that's just what we have to do. We don't realize that just how much our body goes into shock because it's not stopping us mm. from moving on. So, yeah, both of those different fabrics. And I always wonder when I see people, um, their religions, when they have to wear the hajib and everything and, and covered in all their garment, are they hot? They got to be hot. It's 100 <laughs> degrees out here. But when it's in linen, it's breathable. So they're able to, you know, their bodies are, their body is not consuming the heat that we may think is consuming. I'm sure it has to be a breathable fabric, which mm -hmm. makes all the difference in the world. But thank you so much for, for educating me on, on all of this. Yeah. You know. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So Nancy, you were right regarding the, about the summer and winter type things and about obviously uh, wearing the linen during the summer times and the, uh, and the wool during the uh, winter months. Um, but also too to understand that if you mix them together, you, I don't I don't see it. You like if you wear a blend during the summertime, I guess you'd still hot. Or you'd still be uh, you'd sweat more. And but also if you wore that mixture in the wintertime, it wouldn't keep you as warm. So right, right. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a really good point. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, I wouldn't wear wool in the summertime either. Yeah. Uh, any other comments or questions? Um, Andre, considering the uh, frequencies of heaven, um, when we can, and I've been doing this when I do communion. I also, um, as I, with the blood, I um, consider and I, I, I apply the frequencies of the blood to me. Oh, wow. And I also I go this is I and apply the speaking power of the blood, the frequencies there. When you think about the frequencies of the speaking power of the blood of Jesus Christ, that has that reverberates out to the farthest, farthest end of creation, of which we have no measurable end to it, because God never stops creating. And you know the power oh. of the blood does that. So when I do communion, I and I, I go and thank you for the blood. I, you know, the thank you for the frequencies of the blood of Jesus Christ, the frequencies of the speaking power of the blood of Jesus Christ, and apply it to myself. And especially with when we look at healing, if we're praying for somebody who's who's sick, I apply that also as I do communion, and I apply that too. So anyway, <laughs> my little tidbit there, that I I've, I've wondered with the frequencies. Thank, I, thank you for that. That's powerful. That is, yeah, like Bradley said, uh, my God, Nancy, that is powerful. I agree. That is so, yeah, I never thought about that, but now I'm going to do that from now on. Definitely. Immeasurable. Let's face it, right. that's, that's, that's for us immeasurable and just, it's, who knows where God will take us when we start engaging more and more with that. Amen. Amen. We're going to start doing that most definitely. And I used to always think about when Paul, when he said, take a little piece of linen cloth and put this and give this to the sick. And I'm thinking like, wow, that and the prayer of faith, it, it makes all sense now. It makes all the sense in the world now. I love it. Any other questions or comments?
Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. So yeah, that was that was interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that chart together, and we're just gonna see what well, between silk, neon, rayon, and polyester and bamboo. Uh, put them all, and we'll just get a chart together, and I'll, I'll post it in there. So amen. So guys, thank you for letting me have your Saturday afternoon. Um, uh, faith upon faith, line upon line, precept upon precept. It's gooder and gooder, gooder and gooder. Quick question now that we all understand between wool and linen, who's going to be the first millionaire? I am, Marilyn. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we love you guys, and we will definitely see you guys on Wednesday. See how much more I can just, I wanted to see if I can just freak you out. Every I, I, I purpose in my heart to freak you out, so we'll see how much we can, how much more we can do that. <laughs> love you all. Love you more, Brie. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Shabbat Have a great shalom. weekend, everyone. Have a blessed weekend. Stay safe. Enjoy. Shalom. Be safe. Shalom. Love. I love it. Shalom. I love it. <laughs> love it. Shalom. <laughs> Bye, everybody.